Hey, JC here. After this introduction, you're going to watch a full-length teaching called Practicing Restraint. This comes from our new video series that's going to be released at the end of January 2013, possibly at latest mid-February 2013. The video series is going to be over two hours long, so keep an eye out. It's coming your way soon, and enjoy this video on Practicing Restraint. Okay, I want to talk about Practicing Restraint. When I first started going to alcoholism support group meetings to help me learn how to deal with alcoholics and addicts, I learned early on that my lips were the big problem. If I could learn how to zip my lip, I would say a lot less, and that way I would have a lot more peace and serenity in my life, and so would the alcoholic. You know, I've talked about those buttons that the alcoholic would push and how it would react in a negative way. Once I began to learn what those buttons were and I began to guard myself from reacting whenever the alcoholic would try and push them, I started to step back and shut up and smile and I had time to process what was happening then I could respond in a more self-disciplined manner. Now there's a lot of things that we use in practicing restraint. We run things through a filter. How important is it? Some things are not so important for me to address. I can just let go of those things, and I let go of those things through going to support group meetings, journaling, talking to friends, exercising, doing things that I love to do. That's not so important, so I set it off to the side and I get focused on something else. But then there are other things that are important and I need to set a boundary. I practice restraint through learning how to say things that I mean without saying them mean, and that's a part of responding in a self-disciplined manner rather than reacting in the moment. So if I can get self-control over the things that come out of my mouth, I have more time to process what it is that I would really like to say in a loving way rather than just reacting in a very negative way and blurting out a bunch of negativity on top of the alcoholic. So the promises of practicing restraint mean that I'm going to have more peace and serenity in my life. And this comes about through um, not arguing and fighting. When I step into that ring with the alcoholic, I'm going to say things that I don't want to say, and I'm going to come away feeling guilty. They're going to come away from it feeling bad as well. Then I may have to make an amend. And when I make the amend, here I have to practice restraint again, knowing that I'm making amend to keep my emotional well-being intact, to get my side of the street clean, and I have no control over how the alcoholic is going to respond or react to the amend that I've made. So I have to practice restraint if they react in a negative way and they throw it back in my face. I have to be self-disciplined and zip my lip and pull out these tools where I can say to the alcoholic addict, I'm sorry you're, you feel that way. You know, I've told you that I'm sorry for what I did and I'll do my best not to do it again. I love you and what I did was wrong. And so we practice restraint from reacting to defend ourselves to pulling out these tools and being stronger. I'm sorry you feel that way, that's your opinion. I'll try not to do that again. But we're on guard, you know, that we make it this stuff thrown back in our face by the alcoholic. I can practice restraint in the area of not being the private investigator, not checking their phone messages, not looking at their text messages, not going through their mail, not calling them at work just to see if they're really at work, or calling them at their friends or wherever it is that they've said that they've gone. Practicing restraint in this area will help me have more peace and serenity in my life because generally when I'm the private investigator, I get very obsessed with the alcoholic and their behaviors and inevitably I find this little needle in the giant haystack of insanity and I try and put together some puzzle that just cannot be put together out of the piece that I have found and I drive myself absolutely insane trying to figure out something that I have not a clue of what's going on in the alcoholic's life, who the telephone number was from. You know, I start looking at their phone records and trying to figure out why they were over here at this time or who they were talking to and it's just insanity. If I can break the old patterns I will have a lot more peace and serenity in my life. And that's what all this practicing restraint is about. It's about breaking old patterns. You know, all of those old things in my life that I have done over and over again to try and control the alcoholic and manipulate them, to 
trying to get them to stop drinking. Once I recognize that those things have had no effect, that the alcoholic has continued to drink, regardless of all of those things that I tried to do, then I can begin to see the reality of the situation and to practice restraint in more areas of my life. Things like not getting in the car and going around to look for them whenever they're not home when they said that they were going to be. I remember going into a bar one time and confronting the alcoholic when they were two hours late. They said they were going to be home, we were supposed to do something, and I drove by the bar and I saw their car there and I walked right in the bar just full of irritation. Now, mind you, I had purposely gotten in the car to go look for them and found them. And I walked in there obsessed with rage and anger and got into a, an argument right there in the bar and they screamed and hollered at me and called me every name in the book and I went storming out of there angry and upset and said things that were mean that I didn't really want to say and I came away and my whole evening was just shot and upset and so practicing restraint just don't get in the car there's nothing I can do about it they're not home maybe they are down the street maybe they're not regardless they are refusing to answer their cell phone and they obviously don't want to spend time with me so I need to change my focus and start doing something that I like to do let go of the alcoholic there's nothing I can do about the situation and practice restraint from calling them on the phone I called them once I left a message don't continue to call them over and over again practice restraint only call them once if the alcoholic calls back um, great answer the phone and talk to them um, now if the alcoholic calls you've had a heated discussion with them and they're calling you back you know that they might be leaving you a nasty phone message you can listen to the beginning of the phone message but you don't have to listen to the whole thing if you know that they're just heaping a bunch of junk on top of you just delete it practice restraint in pre protecting yourself um, we don't have to own everything that the alcoholic says about us. Everything they say about us is not true. So we put up that shield. We practice restraint from falling into the old patterns of obsessing and just wilting and withering over everything that the alcoholic projects on us. We practice restraint in that area. I'm not going to let that affect me anymore because I know the truth of who I am. I'm a good person regardless of what it is that they say about me or how they treat me. I know that I'm a good person. I love myself and whatever it is that they have to say about me, you know, maybe some of it's true, but most of it, that's just their opinion and maybe it's not true. So, um, all of these things help in, in the practicing part of restraint. Remember, this is progress, not perfection. The battleground for me was learning how to zip my lip. The battleground for me was learning how to not get in the car to go look for them. The battleground for me was not calling them over and over and over. The battleground was breaking those old behavior patterns that I had been caught up in for such a long time. The insanity of this alcoholism, this disease, and breaking that cycle through practicing restraint from stepping into the old behavior patterns. Okay, so... You continue to get a lot of tools. You can continue to get a lot of um, different scenarios and different ways that you can begin to change your behavior patterns as you interact with the alcoholic. Now, these things are not easy to do. Even though we practice restraint, we still have to deal with emotions and thinking patterns, um, and we wrestle with these things. But the good thing about practicing restraint is that we do have more peace and serenity in our life because... We cut off the opportunity to have more guilt and shame in our life because of our actions or um, the things that we communicate in the, this whole area um, of dealing with the alcoholics and addicts in our life. So, there's a little bit about practicing research.